if someone came up to any of us and said, jump, we'd probably flinch and be confused. If they said that to Darren Plob, he'd probably say, how high? Seven feet okay? <laughs> Darren's dad, Terry, was an outstanding athlete and ba baseball player. He signed a pro contract with the Cardinals. Young Darren played a lot of baseball as a kid, too, but he lost his love, apparently, of playing baseball in high school. And a friend suggested he try track and field. So he came out, as I understand it, on his very first day with a high jump, he cleared six feet four inches, just an inch short of the school record. As a senior at Mascuda High School, he jumped seven feet two and a half inches. SIU Carbondale came calling, and as a Saluki, Darren became one of the top high jumpers in the world. He won the NCAA championship twice, clearing seven feet six inches, six and a half inches in 1991. Then in 92, he soared seven feet eight inches. He wanted to set the world record and took a shot at the bar at eight feet, and I'm told narrowly missed. He'll have to, he'll have to verify that. He made the United States Olympic team. His performance in Spain was probably a bit of a disappointment. He failed the medal, but he competed internationally for a while and finally decided enough was enough. So his personal best remains seven feet, eight and a half inches. So just don't say jump if you're on Darren. We're honored to induct him into St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Darren. Right here. Here's what I brought along. I brought a tape measure along. All right, pull that out to seven feet, eight and a half inches. Hang on. Where are we? Make sure we do it right. That's seven feet. That's seven feet. There it is. Okay. Now, whoop, hold, hold it up. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine? Can you imagine jumping over that? Would you use a trampoline? No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, congratulations. Let's go over and talk about it. Seven feet, eight and a half inches. Oh, my goodness. There's a mic there. Where, uh, where did this talent come from? You know, I don't know. Is this kind of a freak? Um, yeah, I, I just, would say that, I, yeah. I just wanted to go jump, and it was, like I said, it was just kind of a, a fun thing to do to get an athletic letter. Um, back in high school, you know, that was the days you had your athletic jacket and you had all your, your letters on it. And, and the girls kind of, liked you then? Oh, yeah. That's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> So, but you didn't know you had this ability? I didn't. I, I truly love baseball and I truly love basketball. Those were my passions. Um, I played it all my life and, and you know, I, I grew up on a farm and I, I remember watching my sister play all the time. She was kind of my idol as an athlete. Um, and my dad was a great competitor and yeah. just kind of, I don't know. Was he disappointed when he quit playing baseball? Oh, I think I broke my dad's heart. <laughs> you know, my dad was a big baseball fan and and, and I love baseball too, but I just wasn't that talented at it. I was, I was pretty wild. And there's a lot of times I'd throw the ball over the backstop, you know, at, at shortstop. So, <laughs> but that's okay. I kept everybody honest, and it was, it was a good time. Without checking with you, I suspect you could dunk a basketball. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it was good. It was good. Okay, so you went to SIU Carbondale, and you become the big star down there, right? I did, and it was, it was a life-changing time for me. Uh, I had a lot of people I knew down there from my sister because she played basketball down at SIU Carbondale, and, and I felt like that was family to me. I knew all the basketball coaches, the men's and the women's for that matter, and it was just a good place for me to be. I felt like it was home. It was kind of like my hometown. Um, I was a small-town boy, and it was an exciting time for me. Who was the track coach down there then? Uh, Bill Cornell was the track coach back okay. then. Uh, he was a distance runner back in the day, and he offered me a full-ride scholarship, and and he believed in me, and I, I was very thankful to, to go there. Now, you started out at Illinois, right? I don't want to bring up bad memories. But... I did. I did. I went to University of Illinois. Uh, but the joke is I lasted there 32 days. 32 <laughs> days. 32 days. <laughs> I came back home. Um, so, but actually, it was one of those things that I think truly motivated me to, to, to get me where I was. Uh, it was meant to be, and I have no regrets whatsoever. But like I said, Bill Cornell at SIU Carbondale, um, Came knocking on my door, and I was there six months later. Little Darren got homesick. I did. I did. I think I cried every day at school. <laughs> I was not good. I was not you, good there you, at all. You don't get very good grades if you're crying at school. No, right? it's not good. Not good at all. <laughs> okay, you won the NCAA Division One championship twice. Okay, then came the Olympic trials. What was that like? That was an exciting time because, and, and truly, I didn't have any 
real pressure on me. I was just a young kid at the time, so no one really truly expected me to, to make it to the Olympic Games. And I, th I think uh, I, I just I, I rose to the occasion, and, and my goal was to make it to the Olympics. I talked about it in high school. I wanted to be an Olympic athlete, and, and it, it truly came true for me. Yeah, you, you did, did you win the uh, trials? I ended up getting second place. I jumped seven, eight and a half at the Olympic trials, which was the first place was seven, eight and a half as well. But when you go to you go to misses after that, right. and so he beat me on misses. But I got second place, and then third place was seven, seven and a quarter. Now I said you tried to set the world record at eight foot. How close did you come? You know, some people say I got pretty close, but I don't know how close it was. But it was more just my attitude. You know, I, I believed I could do it, and I, I passed all the American records. I went from uh, seven eight, and I passed the bar all the way up to eight foot, and that was just that was my goal. And, and I knew if I hit it right, I could do it. And, I came somewhat close. So you, you did set the American record at the time, huh? That wasn't the American record. The American record seven ten and a quarter, something oh, okay. like that. But, okay. But I was willing to pass the American record and just go for the world record. <laughs> Why not? Like, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> what the hell? You get the world record, you're going to get the American record as <laughs> well. Right. It's pretty simple to me. And the girls <laughs> would like that too, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Now, you get to the Olympics. Now, I, I've been to the Olympics. I covered uh, the Sydney Games for CBS Radio. I was there for about a month, and I know how intimidating it was from a media point of view. As an athlete, was it intimidating? You know, it was. I was there two weeks early uh, in the Olympic Village, and I think I was a little awestruck a little bit. You know, you start seeing some of these professional athletes, and you kind of look up to them and, and maybe feel a little bit intimidated. Um, like I said, if I could do it a little bit different, I probably wouldn't have showed up until about two days before the track meet, just so I didn't have to worry why, about why it. Why would that make a difference? I think I, I kind of psyched myself out a little bit. I, I kind of was intimidated and, and maybe didn't quite have the confidence that I probably should have in the meet. Well, I read the gold medal winner was jumped less than your than your your best, right? It was. It was only seven, eight and a quarter. I think that was first and second, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So you know, if you show up at the right time, you, you definitely can can win a gold medal. But one thing they can never take away from you is the thing, Olympic athlete. Absolutely, I'm very proud of that, and I think. As I get older, it gets more and more important to me over the years, and I'm, I'm extremely thankful to be here in, in front of all of you. Um, I'm, like I said, it, it, it feels really nice. You still have the uniform? Can you get into it? I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a little bit tight, but I think I can do it. I think I can do it. What are you, what are you doing these days? With? Uh, I run my own lawn care business. I've got two wonderful boys and, and live out in Mascuda, and I'm very so, at peace. So you cut grass? I do. I love it. I've been doing it for 33 years. Darren, we're proud of you. Olympic athlete, Darren Plop. Thank you.